Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two from tutorial one on how to calculate the maximum short circuit current available at a bus bar on our series of electrical network design. If you haven't yet subscribed to SimTech channel, please do it right now. You never miss videos like this. In this tutorial, we're going to continue from where we left off. That is to determine the current that must flow on bus bar 3, bus bar 4, and bus bar 5. We've already determined what's the current flowing on bus bar 1 and bus bar 2. You may look at the previous tutorial to update yourself. So let's get right into it. What would be the maximum short circuit current at bus bar 3? We've already seen from the previous tutorial that we need to add all the per unit impedance from the generator to line 1 and line 2 in order to get what the current will be on bus bar 3 as the current will take this particular path. So the total per unit impedance will be the sums of Z per unit of generator of line 1 and line 2 as shown below and uh, adding those we will have the 0,24 J and 0,011 with an angle of 73.82 and 0,0113 with an angle of 73.77 now in the previous uh, tutorial we have converted these ones that are in polar form into the rectangular form this time around, we will convert this one into polar form. As you can see, there is no real part. It's only the imaginary part. That means the angle is 90 degrees. So we convert it into polar form. And that way, we can just add it easily with our calculator. So the sums is then equal to 0, 0,261 with an angle of 88.64 degrees. So this is the total per unit impedance from the generator down line 1, down line 2, and flowing down to bus bar 3 to earth. Now, this is the path the current flowing from the generator will take. This means this total per unit is then what we're going to use to calculate our I per unit current. I per unit current will then be given as... 1 over 0, 0,261 with an angle of 88.64. We found an I per unit of 3.83 with a negative angle because the angle will now move to the top and change the sign and become a negative angle. But we're not going to take account of that. We're just concerned about the amplitude of the current, which is 3.83. Now, the line current will remain exactly the same as the bus bar voltage haven't changed, we still have 132 kilovolt. So we're going to use exactly the same line current, which is 437.386 amp. The previous tutorial, we saw how we calculated that line current using the formula on your screen. Moving forward, then the R short circuit will be the I per unit times I line, replacing the formula the, the values into the formula we get 3.83 times the 437 and that gives us a total short circuit current of 1675.118 amp so this is the current that will be available at this point so if someone has to come and touch here that's the current that will flow from that bus bar into the ground or anything has to happen to cause that short circuit to take the shortcut that's what it called. It takes the shortcut instead of going down this way. It's now take the shortcut straight to earth. So that's the magnitude that will be available at 1.6 kilo amps. Moving on, we may also, as we have seen, uh, calculate the total short circuit MVA that is available based on that short circuit current. That is basically uh, replacing the current into this apparent power formula. That will then give us a value of 383 megavolt ampere. 
as the magnitude of the prospective short circuit MVA. Now moving on, we go to bus bar 4. What is the maximum short circuit current that will flow at bus bar 4? Right there. Now the current will now take this path. This way. So this means our Z per unit total here must now include the per unit value of the transformer t1 remember this per unit is the one that is found as an internal impedance per unit of the transformer now there is something that's going to be different here this time what is it now we can see that this bus bar is now energized with a different voltage the potential have changed the potential is no longer 132 kilovolt it's not 66 kilovolt since the step down transformer here have done its work so what does it mean that means the line current will now be different the line current will change it's no longer going to be the same it's going to increase you guessed it the voltage goes down the current must increase to maintain the caveat in and caveat out so the z per unit total will then be the sums of all the per unit values in the line that give us a z per unit total of 0 0.387 with an angle of 89.1 degree calculating our i per unit from the z per unit total will then give us a value of 2,584 with an angle of minus 89.1 degree. As we've stated, we only concern about the amplitude, the magnitude of the current there, which give us a value of 2.584 amp. So moving on, I line will increase as the voltage have now been reduced to do the step down. Current. So now our I line is no longer going to be 437. We have now to calculate our I line. So we calculate our I line with the I base formula on your screen. Remember I line is equal to I base. That is the base current that it will be flowing on the secondary of the transformer here. Because now this is a primary and this is a secondary. So our I base is now going to be on the secondary. Remember, for a step down transformer, I1 is not equal to I2. So if it's a step down, you're going to have a low current there and a high current here. Okay. So now our I line is going to be with the same 100 MVA with a new voltage. Then it's going to be 874.77 amps. So that is now the value of our line current continuing on our fault current at bus bar 4 we've already calculated i line which is 874.77 amps does mean then the short circuit current uh, at bus bar 4 is now i per unit times i line we already got our i per unit which is 2.584 now uh, multiplying it with our i line then give us a short circuit current of 2,260.387 amps. That's 2.2 kilo amps. So that is about 2.2 kilo amps that's going to be present at this point here. So if something has to happen here or someone drinks a lot of red wine and come and touch his bus bar at the substations, he is going to be electrocuted with a 2,000 200 amps flowing from his hand through his heart down to earth with a potential of 66 kilovolt. You don't want to know what will happen to that person. Okay, so we move forward. We can also calculate the short circuit MVA uh, using the same method, replacing our I line uh, into the formula. Then we get a short circuit MVA of 258.4 megavolt ampere. Now we move on to fault current uh, on bus bar 5. That is this bus bar. Bus bar 5. Okay. Now the same procedure will apply. So the current will now take this path. 
so this is only possible if there is no short circuit here now the current is no longer going there now the current has to now pass through this impedance here z per unit line two now this is line three that's a typo there so that is z per unit line three because that's line one line two and that is line three so now the current will now take this path right there now what will be the z per unit total we just have to add all the per unit from the generator z per unit of the line one line two transformer and now line three so we add all of them into polar form and we get a z per unit total of 0 0.408 with an angle of 88.9 degrees this z per unit total will then be used into the i per unit formula which is 1 over z per unit total and that gives us a current of 2.451 with an angle of minus 88.9 degree so now that is the i per unit up to this point the value of the i per unit now we need to multiply it with the i line now remember at this point i line is also going to still be the same because we are still operating at a 66 kilovolt there is no more transformer at this point here so then our i short circuit is going to be 2 1144.04 amps that is our r short circuit at bus bar 5 this point here moving on we may also calculate the short circuit mva that is going to give us a value of 245.1 megavolt ampere so this is in short how you calculate the short circuit current of a particular network for every bus bar involved in a particular substations or on multiple substations to that meter. Now that we've already determined what are the maximum short circuit current for each one of these bus bar, please notice the patterns here. We had a higher voltage here, so the current was slightly smaller now as the voltage went down via this transformer because remember there is a transformer at this point here now we there is a transformer here there is a transformer there that is changing from 132 kilovolt to 66 so now we can see the voltage go uh, the current uh, pardon me the current go up so the current goes up as the voltage goes down to maintain transformer power transfer properties okay so in the next tutorial that is what we will be doing how to select these current transformers here just current transformers here because now we know that these protective current transformer or measuring current transformer whichever the case may be they are going to be protecting uh, whatever equipment that is here or what is connected onto these bus bars, these loads here. So this current transformer must be able to know if what's the normal current that's flowing here and in a situation where that current is no longer the same, now it's a short circuit current, the, the, the current transformer then need to tell the circuit breaker, ah, oh, listen, the current value is no longer what it's supposed to be so you need to break then the circuit the circuit breaker is going to break open up and protect the equipment or the personnel so that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial please uh thank you for watching subscribe to simtech channel like the video and share and uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial thank you cheers